Okay, today I want to talk about using the promise all method and using it in conjunction with CSS links. So there are going to be times when you want to dynamically load some CSS and you want to know when all the CSS files that you're trying to load have been loaded. The same theory can be applied to if you're loading multiple JavaScript files, let's say you're using a framework and it's got a CSS file and a JavaScript file or two JavaScript files or two CSS files, you want to go and load those and you don't want to do anything on your page until those have all been loaded, not just one of them, but all of them have been loaded and then you're going to start to do whatever the functionality is on your page. So I want to show you how you can use promises to manage that. So here I have a very, very, very basic page. I've got an H1 heading up on the top. I've got uh, just an embedded style just for the sake of having something. Uh, I've got a dark purple or dark magenta background and sans serif text. And I've got these two other CSS files. Now I can put them in here directly, but I'm just going to say for the sake of argument that something was happening on the page and there was a delay before these things get loaded they need to be delayed before they're loaded. Inside of them, one of them just displays a font size, the other one displays a color. So it changes the text color to light blue, changes the font size to 4REM, so it's going to be big blue text on the purple background instead of black text, which is the default. Okay, so in my script, uh, I've got a couple of defaults, uh, my shortcuts for console log and console warn, uh, these are the two URLs that I'm going to be loading, and this is the way that you dynamically load a style sheet onto a page. You create a link tag, you set its rel attribute, you can set its type attribute optionally, it's not required anymore. I'm going to add a load listener to the link and an error listener, so if the load happens, hey, it means that your CSS loaded. If the error happens, it means there was a problem, could have been a 404 error, whatever it is. So link.href is the final parameter that we need. And I could use one of these variables, so I'm just going to show the wrong one here first. Well, actually, we'll start with the correct one. Why not? Now, this looks like it works. So we've got a link tag, the rel, the type, the href, all set. And we're wanting to reach the page but you can see it's not light blue and I don't have the background here. The um, Sorry, the font size and the font color are not showing up. And that's because with link tags the loading does not actually take place until you've put the link tag into the head. With images, when you load those all you have to do is set the source and the image will be loaded and it'll be kept off, off screen and you'll get the fact that the load event has fired. It'll say, hey, I've downloaded the image source into the image element, even if the image element isn't on the page. With link tags, you have to put them on the page to trigger this link load. So we'll say document.head.penchild, and the link is what we're adding. Refresh. And there it is, there's the 4REM text and the message, your CSS be here. Talk like a pirate day. There it is. This happened only after we actually appended it to the page. Now if we put something completely invalid URL for our link, we run this, there we go, your CSS ready, not. Okay, so we don't have it. So the error, error listener works, the load listener works, but they only work when this happens. Now, the situation that I'm looking at is I want to load two of these things, and I don't want to do anything or I don't want to start a certain functionality, whatever it is, until both of them have been loaded. So here's my loading script for one of them. I can add a second function to load. Uh, another script, or I can have both scripts pointing to the same function, but I, I'll have to count the number of times that the function is actually called. So to avoid doing that, I'm going to use promises. I'm going to wrap all this code inside of a promise. 
So key one, my first promise, new promise. Promises want to get or need a function to be passed to them. And inside the function, they need two names. The name of a function to call when it works and one to call when it fails. Okay, this is my promise. I'm going to take all of this code and I'm going to put it inside my promise. There we are. All my code inside the promise. And here, where I was saying before that I've got the CSS, when that's done, I'm going to call resolve. And I'm going to pass my link tag. Why not? That's the thing that I'm going to possibly do something with later on? Possibly. So I just want to pass something back. And if we have a reject situation, which is the on error, there we are. That's what I'm going to pass back there. So my error object, I'm going to pass that on to whatever my reject function was. So there's my first one. Let's change this back to URL1 so we get something really happening. And then I can copy that, paste it down here. Number two does the same thing, URL2, there. Now I have two promises on my page. Promise one, promise two. The first one is loading the first URL, the second one's loading the second URL. They both have listeners for the onload event. When the onload event fires, the promise resolves. This is why I can use promise.all, because promise.all, it wants to get a list of things to resolve. So promise.all, it wants a promise iterable, an array of promises. So inside here, I'll put P1 and P2. Those are the things that I want to resolve. And when both of them have been resolved, this function right here, then, so this would be my things, my array of things being passed back. This will be P1 and P2. This array right here is what gets passed into here. Once these things are resolved, I've got two resolved arrays. I can access those links and we can log out a message. Both the links for CSS have been loaded. And there it is, big blue text. Both CSS were loaded and the promises was re were resolved by promise.all. Both of these things are now ready. Now I can continue on. Now my page can run and use both the scripts or scrubs or images or scripts. Whatever it is that you're trying to load, this isn't just for CSS. CSS has that little oddity that you have to put it inside the head before you can get the on load event. Scripts don't have that. Images don't have that. You can load them and use them. And you can wait until you've got two, three, four, eight of them. You want to load eight images and you want to make sure that you're not doing anything until all of them have loaded? Well, you can put an on load listener for every single one of your images and then you have a counter and you increment the counter each time or use promise.all. Just wrap a promise around each one of your loads and then promise.all, this becomes a list of all of those possible things. So promise one, two, three, four, and so on. If however many things you're trying to load, as long as you've got a promise wrapped around each one inside the onload listener, you call resolve. Once all of them are done, then you can run this and catch down here, this is going to catch the reject. If any of them call reject, that's what this function down here is for. So if this is called, we know that there was an issue. If one of these rejected, if one of my four promises if any one of the four of them had a problem, this catch down here is going to be called. And that's how you do your error handling. Just 
nice and neat. One function to call when things work out, one to call when they fail, and you get to wait until every one of your things that you're trying to load has actually finished loading. All right, hope that helps you at some point. Any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.